Hi guys, it's Third Inspector here. In today's video, I'm going to be exploring the possible options for GPU miners after the Ethereum merge happens. If any of these ideas are new to you, then like the video and subscribe for more ways to make money after the Ethereum merge. The Ethereum merge is a change that is happening on the network. The network is switching from proof of work to proof of stake. This was supposed to happen way back in 2019, but has been pushed back multiple times since then. Today, as of writing, the Ethereum team has said that it will be done by November, but many miners are still skeptical on if the merge will be done by then. Personally, I've been mining for the past year or so, and it has been pushed back three times since I started mining. It will probably be pushed back further than November, but all miners need to put a plan in place for when it eventually does come in. The merge is supposed to come into effect when the Ethereum difficulty bomb goes off. The Ethereum difficulty bomb increases the block time exponentially on the network to ensure that miners are still rewarded for making blocks on the network while the switch to proof of stake is happening. This allows for the network to stay up and running while the merge is happening. The difficulty bomb will keep increasing block times until there are no more blocks to mine and the merge will be successfully completed. Recently the difficulty bomb has gone off but the Ethereum team have plans to defuse it because they aren't ready to merge yet. This is good for miners as they get to keep mining at low block times for a little bit longer. As of right in this, the Ethereum profitability isn't very good due to both the crypto crash and the longer block times of 16 seconds. So right now is the best time to shut off your rigs and put a plan in place for mining after the Ethereum merge. Personally, I've been stopping my rigs and cleaning my GPUs ready for when they eventually start to mine a different coin. Cleaning your GPUs allows for better hash rates while mining and lower temperatures due to there being less dust and better airflow to the heat sinks of your GPU. Now the basics of the merge have been covered, let's get into the four options for GPU miners after the merge. The first option is probably the most talked about and this is mining other proof of work coins. There are a lot of other proof of work coins out there to mine, but it only makes sense to mine if you're being profitable. This is where we run into a few problems with these other proof of work coins. Most coins that can be mined only have a small overall hash rate on their networks. When the Ethereum merge happens, we'll see a hash rate migration from the Ethereum network to all these other coins. Right now there is over 1 peta hash on the Ethereum network, which is over 1 billion mega hash. All this hash rate needs to go somewhere. It will be diluted into other proof of work coins. This in turn will drive the difficulty of these coins up and they will not become profitable to mine. For example, Ethereum Classic is a coin that was the original Ethereum coin. They had a hard fork due to the network attack, which led to the creation of the main Ethereum coin we know now. The hash rate on the Ethereum Classic network is only 25 terahash, which is 25 million mega hash. So even if Ethereum Classic receives 5% of the 1 billion mega hash from the main Ethereum network, it would put the Ethereum's classic network at three times the amount it is now. That would give us a network hash rate of around 75 million mega hash. When this hash rate hits, the network difficulty will shoot up because more people are mining and it would in theory slash the profits by around 65%. And remember, Ethereum Classic is one of the biggest proof of work coins. So when it comes to all the other coins, the profits will be slashed further when they receive the hash rate migration from the Ethereum network. The option to mine other coins is there, but the profits will most likely be in the negatives or slightly just above positive. Now the one savior for our mining other coins is the price of a coin. All these coins currently don't have the price that can support profitability while mining. However, if the price of a coin goes up, you'll be able to mine it profitably. For example, Ethereum Classic sits at around $17 a coin. If the price were to skyrocket to let's say $100 a coin, it could in theory support a higher amount of hash rate on the network while still being profitable to mine. I predict that we'll see a hike in price of these proof of work coins when the merge happens. This is because price tends to follow a network's hash rate, meaning that if coins receive more hash rate, their price is likely to go up a little bit more. This is because there will be more adoption of the coin, so the network will be used to buy and sell more of the coin. This will be through miners selling for profits or mining pools swapping coins for payouts. The coins I'm looking to mine going forward are Flux, Ravencoin, Ergo and Ethereum Classic. The second option we have is to offer your GPUs computing power to data centers and HPCs. 
In simple terms, you allow other companies that need computing power to use your GPU to do things such as AI learning or solve complex math problems. This is more of an obscure way to make money from your cards as you have to do some digging to find these companies that require your GPU's computational resources. There are lots of companies out there that want CPU power, but there are also some out there that need GPU power. The biggest example of this is probably the SETI project. This was set up to analyze radio signals and they asked people to download a simple program which runs in the background of your computer and processes these radio signals, which uses your computing power to do so. There is also a command line you can run to search for prime numbers called Prime95. Whenever you find a prime number, you get rewarded. In theory, it's just crypto mining but for a different type of hashing algorithm. Most large data centers don't need your computational power, but if there are small ones in your surrounding area, then give them an email and see if they would like to use your GPU power for their center. This will probably bring in less profits than mining right now, but when the merge comes in, the profits from data centers will be more than any coin you can mine. I would also be careful that they don't overwork your cards and make sure that they keep them at good temperatures with core and memory clocks at steady numbers. The next option is similar to the last one discussed but is more centered around the Web3 space and providing compute to these Web3 services. As Web3 is becoming the new layer of the internet, many companies are trying to get into the space but need computing power to run all their systems. Web3 is basically the integration of multiple different blockchains put together to form a World Wide Web. This allows for developers to build on any blockchain and still have their product exposed to these different chains. This all runs off nodes on the network and if you set up a node on a Web3 network you'll get rewarded in a form of crypto. Your computing power can be put towards things such as data services, digital marketing systems, decentralized domains and D-Web hosting. All this is done in the effort to make decentralization the main goal, where banks, governments and big tech companies don't have control over your assets anymore. So by lending your computing power, you're making it more decentralized and pushing for a better Web3. The final option that I think a lot of GPU miners should do is take their Ethereum and stake it. When the Ethereum merge happens, all the crypto exchanges will be open in staking pools for Ethereum. In turn, you'll be allowed to stake your Ethereum that you've been mining. Many big exchanges such as Coinbase have already got this feature up and running, ready to go for when the merge does come in. Depending on how much Ethereum you have mined, you could also choose to set up your own validator node, which requires 32 Ethereum to start. In the current market, this is only worth around $35,000. But if you've been mining for a long time, you should have been able to accumulate a lot of coins. These validator nodes will allow you to keep all the rewards from staking without having to pay fees on major exchanges in a staking pool. Personally, I think that Ethereum's merge will be the downfall of Ethereum because staking doesn't really offer any work to be put in. This means that there's nothing to measure the worth of Ethereum on. For example, Bitcoin uses a large amount of electricity. If everything in Bitcoin goes wrong, we can still link the price back to the amount of electricity used and it would give us a true price of the coin. However, while Ethereum has the same structure now, it will not have it going forward in the future. Staking over a long enough period of time will create a deflationary cycle because more coins are coming in, but the incentive to further stake these coins you will gain from will be more coins. If a majority of holders keep staking and reinvesting, then the price of one coin will become less and less on every staking cycle. So to stake your coins, all you have to do is sign up to a major exchange and they will allow you to put coins into your account and then from there you can choose how long you want your coins to be held. Obviously if you stake for longer, you can get better returns. Also if you stake more coins, you'll get more returns on top of those coins. On Coinbase right now, they have an average return of 4.12% APR. This means after a year's worth of staking, you'll gain 4.12% of the original amount staked. This figure will probably go up when the merge happens because right now blocks are supported by miners. To add further to this node topic, you can also look into running nodes on different networks if you have the capital. A lot of cryptocurrencies offer rewards for running nodes on their network. The best one as of right now are Flux nodes. There are four different tiers of Flux node, with each costing different amounts. We have the Titan node, the Cumulus node, the Nimbus node, and the Stratus node. 
These nodes work with miners to confirm blocks and transactions. Then you get rewarded in the native flux coin if your node finds a block and confirms the transaction. The block reward is split into four slices when a new block is produced. The biggest slice of 50% goes to the miner, then 30% goes to the stratus node, then 12.5% goes to the nimbus node, and finally 7.5% goes to the cumulus node. The reason for this split between the nodes is because the more costly ones get more profits. I mentioned there were four nodes and the last one I left out is the Titan node. It's the cheapest one to get into and requires a pooling of flux from various different flux users to create a cumulus node. So the minimum amount of flux needed for a Titan node is 50 flux, but you can put upwards of 250 flux into the Titan node. It costs 1000 flux to set up a cumulus node. For a Nimbus node it costs 12,500 flux and for a Stratus node it costs 40,000 flux. Right now I think that the Cumulus is the best option because the other two nodes cost too much. Remember if you want to put this money into a Flux node you also have to do the setup by yourself. The Flux Lab YouTube channel has a step by step guide on how to do this so check them out if you're stuck on any problems when setting up your node. Currently Flux is trading at around 46 cents per coin so right now is a great time to buy large amounts of the coin. This is because we have seen highs of $4 on this coin, so theoretically if it goes up to $4 you could 10x your money from this price point. So those are just some options that I think GPU miners could look into when it comes to making money after the Ethereum merge. I know there are many other options out there, but these are the main ones I want to display in this video. If this video did help you, please like and subscribe to the channel, and leave a comment below if you have any questions.